This is Michael Carnes at Exponential Audio, and I'm going to give you a very brief tour of Excalibur. The first thing I'm going to do is go up here in the plugin window and click on this little plus sign. This is the zoom button, and it will let you scale the plugin to twice its normal size. That makes it a little easier for us to see. Be aware that it won't appear if your monitor is too small. If you've spent any time at all with Exponential Audio plugins, you'll see a lot of things that are familiar. Keywords, presets, and favorites. You know how they work. But let's assume you're new at this, so we'll see what's going on. Perhaps the most important thing you can do is to listen to presets and get an overall idea of the sound. You'll see two choices, Keyword and Preset. These are pop-up menus. A keyword is a category. It's the way you might think about what you're mixing. Are you mixing drums or guitar? Perhaps you're mixing post. The keyword is a general guide that may help you find the preset you need. I've chosen the guitar keyword. You'll see there are a lot of presets related to guitar. Flangers, amp models, chorus, all sorts of things. If I change to a new keyword, let's say Resonator, you'll see there are now a whole new group of presets. You'll often see a preset turn up under more than one keyword. That's because a preset is often useful in more than one situation. If you're just starting a mix, keywords might be the way for you to find a useful preset quickly. But don't be afraid to look under the wrong keywords. You might find the perfect preset. I'm going to stop bringing up presets with the GUI. Instead, I'll use a shortcut, the arrow keys on my keyboard. Forward and back arrow load new presets in the same keyword. This means that you don't have to lean forward and concentrate on your computer. It lets you sit back in the sweet spot and really hear what's going on. I can change the keyword with up and down arrow keys. Let's go back to the keyword that appears when you load the plugin for the first time. That's demo. The demo keyword is a sampler with a bit of every flavor of the plugin. This is a quick drive through that lets you get a sense of the many things that Excalibur can do. There are more than 500 presets in Excalibur now, and there will be more with each new version of the code. But if you're like most people, you'll tend to have favorites that you use all the time. How do you find them quickly? The best way is to use the Favorite button. I like robots, so I've made this robot preset a favorite. If I move to another preset, the button will go off because that new preset isn't a favorite. If I come back to robot, I'll see that I've marked it as a favorite. Let's choose a few favorites. Now you'll see there's a new keyword called Favorites. These are just the presets that I've chosen, my personal favorites. You can mark any preset you like, and they'll appear here. If you move to another type of mix, and you find you're not using a preset any longer, you can unmark it, and it disappears from the list. If you unmark every favorite, the favorites list disappears. Now that we've chosen the preset, let's look at a few of the controls. The first is Mix. If you have Excalibur on an aux, you'll probably leave this alone. If you're inline, you can change the mix here. Master Level is an overall gain that applies to each preset. Even though the presets are calibrated to be at approximately unity gain with the broadband signal, you're probably not listening to broadband signals. You're listening to guitar or voice or drums or something else. You might need a trim adjustment to boost or lower the level. You can save this in your own preset and you can automate it. It's also stored with the session you're working on. A little to the right, we'll see a pair of interesting controls called the soft knob and the soft switch. Depending on the preset, these controls can do all kinds of things. 
Excalibur is extremely programmable and you can attach these soft controls to nearly any parameter in the plugin, even multiple parameters at once. We'll talk about this in other videos on programming, but for now, keep in mind that these controls do something in nearly every preset. So play with them. See what happens. It might be dramatic or it might be subtle. You won't find out unless you play. Now let's talk about tempo. You may have noticed that we have a keyword called tempo. This is not the only place where you'll find presets related to tempo, but it's the best place to start. What's going on? Let's assume we have tracks that were recorded wild. The band was in the studio and not locked to a click track. So the workstation tempo doesn't reflect the way the band was playing. You've got a delay or a vibrato that you'd like to lock up with tempo. You can do that two ways. You can enter the tempo directly if you know it, or you can just tap it. Imagine you're hearing the beat, then tap on 1 and 2. Excalibur measures the tempo for you. Right now we're using a vibrato that's locked to tempo. We can tell there's a tempo relationship by noticing this button is latched. We might see tempo buttons all over the place, and tempo can affect a preset in all sorts of ways. Now I'm going to change a preference. I'm setting the tempo to workstation. If you're doing electronic dance music or film score, you may have your sequence set up with carefully programmed tempi. By following the workstation, Excalibur will pull tempo from the session and will relate all tempo effects to that tempo, even as it changes. This video isn't about editing in depth, but I'm going to show you just a little more about how to get around. This is a four voice architecture and you can choose a voice right here. You can see that only a single voice is active in this preset. All of the other voices are dimmed. If I choose a different preset, you can see that each of the voices is different. So we can now choose the voice we wish to edit and we can solo it. We can see several parameters for each voice. There are two inputs per voice, main and alternate. I can choose the inputs and adjust levels. There's feedback level and EQ. There's delay time. There's diffusion that you might use for tape head simulation. There's a frequency control for the output filter, output level and output pan. The invert button changes the polarity of the signal. This is useful in a number of cases and it's easy to do. Input modulation gives you a way to control input level by other means, perhaps the knob or low frequency oscillators, for example. Feedback EQ gives you several types of filters. A dynamic display shows us just what the EQ is doing and we can modulate the EQ frequency in all sorts of ways. We can change the delay to tempo mode, for example. There's more, but that will have to wait for in-depth videos. One other important thing is this area at the right. You'll notice that it changes as I change presets. This is the voice effect editor. I won't say much here, except that this is the way I select effects for that particular voice. It's a matter of selecting the effect and programming it. There are a few other things to touch on. There's a store where you can save and manage your own presets. There's a preference editor that lets you tailor Excalibur to your preferred way of working. Lastly, if you get yourself so confused you don't know what to do, there's always help. Click on the logo and you'll see useful information. There's the version of the plugin, the workstation and format you're using as well as other things. We may ask you about this if you contact us. Here are links that will get more help. The big one is here. It's the user guide. 
Click on the logo again, and we're back to editing. That's a very quick tour of Excalibur. There will be more videos about editing in depth. There's really a lot under the hood. But for now, have fun. Explore the presets and try tweaking them yourself. Thank you.